zero at liftoff of the Delta II rocket with OCO2. It took off less than an hour ago from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. Now, CO2 levels have been steadily rising, and this new tool should help scientists understand why. Tarek Basley has more. Carbon dioxide is an integral part of the Earth's atmosphere. Its levels have fluctuated in the past, but over the last 200 years, it has increased steadily. The last time we saw today's levels, over 400 parts per million, was 15 million years ago. That's why understanding how carbon dioxide behaves is critical. Half of the carbon dioxide we're dumping into the atmosphere every year is disappearing somewhere. It's dissolving in the ocean waters, about a quarter of it is, we know that from our measurements, and the other quarter we assume is going somewhere into the land biosphere somewhere, into forest, into trees, into grasslands, somewhere but we don't know where. To help answer that question, NASA has launched its Orbiting Carbon Observatory. There are already 150 ground-based CO2 monitoring stations, but this satellite lets scientists map carbon dioxide levels at every location on the planet every two weeks. It'll provide around 100 times more data than is currently available. You can imagine the sun's shining, reflecting off of the Earth's surface, and then back up to our instrument. And that's the light that we receive to make these measurements. We actually split that into a thousand small uh, fractions of a wavelength of light in three different bands to see the unique fingerprint of the absorption of carbon dioxide. The satellite's advanced sensors allow it to record CO2 levels in the atmosphere in unprecedented detail. It'll provide around 100 times more data than currently exists, and it's hoped this will give us a better insight into both human and natural sources of the gas, also about where and how it's absorbed, an important unsolved part of the climate change puzzle. Tarek Basley, Al Jazeera.